<laughs> now, uh, this is the bit where I, I know you're not looking forward to this, but we have to bring this up because he's an old friend of yours. I know you don't have any direct knowledge of the situation. John Laurinaitis then gets involved for some threesomes in McMahon's, at McMahon's behest, excuse me. On or about December 29, 2020, a threesome was arranged between McMahon, Laurinaitis and Ms. Grant at McMahon's condo. Shortly after meeting Laurinaitis, Ms. Grant asked him if she was the first woman whom McMahon had introduced to him in such a setting. Laurinaitis failed to respond and shot a look directly at McMahon, who quickly intervened by kissing Ms. Grant and initiating the sexual encounter amongst the three of them. Uh, I'll talk a tiny bit more about Johnny... Uh, then Vince starts farming Grant out to Johnny Ace, negotiating regular times. Grant had to service Laurinaitis on John's behalf, mostly revolving around Grant going to Johnny's room as his quote-unquote breakfast. Uh, a euphemistic term there. Grant is then transferred to talent relations, working directly under Johnny. Uh, sadly, quite literally, um, in, in a sense as well. Grant doesn't want any of this, especially McMahon forcing Grant to apprise him of all encounters with Johnny. On numerous occasions, this is a quote now, Miss Grant was directed to visit Laurinaitis at his hotel room before work to serve himself uh, herself to him as his breakfast, quote-unquote. These devastating experiences made Grant feel as though she were being pimped out as an object for sexual gratification for her new boss. There's more about John for now, but immediately uh, we were talking off-air, and John has always been interested in the ladies, we can say that much. Yeah, Johnny was... Uh, 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 much more uh, uh, outgoing than I was, <laughs> you know. Just put it that way. Uh, he, you know, and he's not the only one. Uh, again, on the when you're on the road uh, for 350 plus days per year, uh, you know, they, there's a lot of guys that do that in a lot of different ways: drinking, but most just almost universally, uh, drugs, nearly universally. And uh, the, the, you know the, the the fans, you know the the, the rats, the, the groupies, whatever term you want to use. Um, there was an awful lot of that going on back then. And again, it wasn't just Johnny. I mean, this was like a ubiquitous thing in the industry. And uh, you know, it's it, again. I, I, there's I'm, I'm trying to parse my words carefully because I don't want to put like more on this than it should be, but. Uh, please understand for everybody out there, I am not proponing this. I am describing it. Uh, you would walk into some of these places. I remember the first time we were in Germany and, you know, bringing the tour bus into town and, and you know, we're at the hotel and have to get out. You, it literally looked like a scene out of uh, Help, you know, the Beatles. I mean, there were ah, screaming people and uh, just going nuts. And you could walk into that hotel lobby, look around, and see them go. And they would follow you right to the elevator, go straight up. Uh, and you could, an hour later, walk back down and go, oh. and another one. I, I can tell you on my children, I never did that. Uh, I was always afraid of death of the AIDS or God knows what else. But the, uh, the, the it, this was quite uh, pervasive through the industry. I mean, it was just part of that day. And, uh, you know, so uh, again, like trying to fl uh, flip back and forth on these and, you know, one side of the fence to the other to equally propone uh, the, the positives and the negatives. Johnny never had difficulty picking women up. Um, he had a gift of gab. He was a intelligent guy, came from corporate America, worked for Honeywell before he got into a, a professional wrestling. And, uh, you know, buried himself in a way that he knew how to do that. He was very well uh, adept at doing that. So, you know, the the idea that he would do this with a young woman, I, I, I don't know if I could say, I'll be, I'll be very careful with that. It, it would seem strange to me that Johnny would have to resort to that. Because he, again, had no trouble. I mean, you know, even like in his public life, you know, you can see they're you know, married, what, the, uh, into the Bell family. Uh, you know, it's all of it. I, I'm finding it hard to find the right words, not just to be careful not to like make any allegation either way. Or, uh, you know, again, like you said, everything is, this is all alleged at this point. But it, it is so 
far over the realm of normalcy. Uh, uh, any kind of, you know, like, if he even say, like, well, my boss told me, you know, and, and or, you know, he was trying to, like, get himself in good with Vince or whatever else. You know that that's to me in the same vein as like the the guards at the uh, at the you know the uh, death camps saying, "Well, you know, I was ordered to do it." You know, I mean, it's, uh, that didn't hold water, water back then either. Uh, it's you know, I my I, I guess in, in the summation of this, like my hope is like when you're reading those things, uh, the, some of that stuff was new to me, and, and I hadn't, like I said, I hadn't had a chance to dig into it, and I. I think like most human beings that you try to put yourself in that position and wonder like what must have been going through this poor young lady's head. And, you know, that, you know, just this, these awful things. And then wondering, does, like I said a second ago, that, well, this is what you have to do to get a job at a place this big and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. It, it is, it's, it's bordering on evil to me. I mean, to, to, to have that kind of power over somebody, but then to execute that power mm -hmm. And, you know, just to show uh, your, your strength, uh, you know, like uh, there, you know, there's the, again, won't say the name. Uh, this is back in 95 when somebody was summarily fired and left off uh, right after, you know, starting his family and then brought back after like a five, six week period and being told, now you know what kind of power I really have. And I thought, okay, well, to have the power is one thing. To use it, though, is another, right? To, to lord over somebody. And and I've said this about Vince a million times. Uh, and, and I don't think it's a judgmental thing. It's just, again, reflecting and, 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 and you know, commenting on what I saw. What do you give this man for, for Christmas? A guy? I mean, if he's got anything he wants to, you know, times a billion or nine. Uh, I genuinely think like the whole ass kissing thing that was just an exhibition of sheer raw authority, right? You're going to do it, James, because I'm your boss. And unless you don't want fired from this job, uh, get down on your knees and kiss my hiney back there. It is, uh, it was so strange. Even then seeing that, that was like so far over the pale to me, but this and lording over, this is somebody's daughter, you know, this is somebody's sister, you know, and, you know, when you hear these stories of people like, you know, losing their minds and stuff and going out and doing heinous things, you know, I, I would dare say this probably would like instigate somebody to, to thinking that way, you know, if you did this to their daughter or, or their sister or their wife or whatever, uh, again, human beings are human beings and you treat them respectfully, uh, now, if somebody you know, does something to you, by all means, send the receipt back. This ain't that. You know, the allegations that are being made here are, you know, really, really uh, of the worst kind when it comes to, to like, sexual uh, uh, lording over, uh, harassment, uh, violence. It's, uh, you'd think by the year 2024, especially in light of the, you know, the long shadow of, of the Me Too movement that people would have a better, you know, that you'd think before you'd act. Hey, you, know, it's, you know, Vince McMahon, he's a, he's a father, right? He's a grandfather. Uh, that Would he want, if there's, you know, would he be having Bill Gates doing this to, or Elon Musk or some other billionaire doing this to his kids or grandkids? And you know the answer would be no. So, uh, again, these are on, you know, assuming that the allegations are true. Uh, it's, uh, if true, I hope this young girl gets everything she's looking for in the lawsuit. Uh, she deserves it. Now, I'm, I'm going to ask you one question, and then I'm going to detail the worst of the allegations, but I won't get you to respond bond to them if you don't want to because obviously you weren't there and sort of what can you add to it in that sense um does the wrestling business or i won't say the wrestling business does having just women on tap all the time and i'm using i'm thinking of examples in ecw occasions you know i've heard quite a lot of stories at the travel lodge and stuff does that warp your sexuality over time it could, it certainly could, right? I mean, you're 
again, this is a, this bubble we're existing in, excuse me, called WWE, ECW, WCW, NW, whatever the bubble is, we're here. And, you know, those people that are the fans coming to the hotel, uh, you know, there's, I'm sure some of it's just to see the stars and, the, you know, to see the people they want to see. Uh, but, you know, I would dare say that if you're going up in, in an elevator in a hotel, uh, that doesn't mean that you've given permission, at least in my thinking. But, uh, you know, it's I, like with Mike Tyson, when that happened, the rape allegation of Mike Tyson, what, 20, 30 years ago, uh, the, the woman that was the chauffeur said that this girl was willingly going along and doing this stuff, but she wasn't allowed to testify. And it was, seems strange to me. Uh, you, you know, if you're going up to somebody's hotel room at midnight or 1 a.m., uh, I, I, you know, although you can't just say, well, it's going to be, you know, it's just a given or it's just understood, but <laughs> to most people wouldn't be understood. Like, Hey, we're not going up there to play patty cakes. Right. Or we're not going to go up there and play a game of chess. Uh, no, but, but similarly, one thing that you expect to happen can turn into something that you don't expect to happen in, in that sure. instance as well. Yeah. You know, and like you're, with some of those allegations you know, that, that are in the, in the court documents, you know, you look at that and you think it's, uh, you know, to make those kind of comments to people, uh, again, if they were said, uh, it's it's so cringeworthy. You know, like that when you hear it, you're like, oh, my God, that somebody actually said that to somebody else. Um, but again, like, I, I, see, I'm, I'm, I keep, I'm trying to, like, jump back and forth because my brain is, first of all, it's impossible for me to separate from the 40-year career I've had and, and, and seeing inside that industry. But I, but also then as the as somebody who's taught this, you know, the subject of history and politics and constitution, uh, you're going back, but the, the, a lot of that stuff is, is uh, assumed. Like the person is going to understand, like the ignorance of the law doesn't give you an excuse, right? You can't say, why did I, I was supposed to stop the stop sign? Uh, but still, these are like basic, I think, bedrock, you know, fundamental principles like that, that you wouldn't need to have a constitutional law uh, course uh, or professor standing there to tell you, uh, to explain it to you. Um, it, it's, uh, in, but again, now is they put my wrestling hat back on. You can easily see how guys in that bubble uh, a one of the bragging in the locker room tomorrow, right? Hey, did you guys see the girl I was with or the lady I was with? Um, and you know, it's 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 a lot of it is over the top bravado, but it's also a lot of that, uh, you know, like if you can prove it, right? Like, hey, you know, six o'clock in the morning, you're coming off the elevator with the girl you went up with last night, then that becomes its own story for the day in the locker room, and uh. And the, just the sense of protection. Uh, I had seen, again, name unimportant, but I had seen, you know, we were making damn good money in wrestling even back then, not not to compare it to today, but good money. And I saw people going into shopping malls and certainly well within their, their ability to buy these shoes or these pants or whatever. And they would walk up and, talk to the, the girl at the counter and then say, well, you know, I, I think I should get 50% off on these. Don't you? You know, and, and of course the girl, it's some, not all the time. They said, sure. You know, let me give it to you. And I thought to myself, you, you're, you're making this much money and you're going to go and you're going to squabble over 50% on, on a pair of tennis shoes or a pair of uh, jeans or something. It, it, and it wasn't a question they could, that they couldn't afford it. It was a question of they had the power to do it because of the R of the business. And, you know, I think that's going to be one of the things that I think as this thing proceeds to throw out for a jury, how, how much of that will they be able to understand? You know, like, I don't mean understand, like on, on the, on just like the, what I, the, the words I just said, understanding that culture, you know, there's a, there's a group of people out there that do this kind of stuff. And this is quote unquote normal in their world. And, you know, it's just, I, 
I'd love to be a fly on the jury, uh, mm. you know, on the, uh, on the jury uh, foreman's wall, the, the jury room in the back where they deliberate. I'd love to hear the comments that get thrown around back there when deciding this, because it's going to be uh, quite interesting. Now, a lot of this beforehand, I'm sure a prosecutor would argue, you know, it's a grey area she initiated or she consented or whatever. The following are not. These are these are rape ac- accusations. This is sexual assault accusations. Uh, and as I say, you don't have to react to them or anything because, as I say, neither of us were there. What else can we sort of add to it? Uh, aside from, I know, in, especially in John's case, hope it's not true. Threesome yeah. rape allegation. McMahon and Laura Nice has ignored her pleas and brought her into Laura Knight's office, forcibly touching and undressing her before forcing her to engage in a threesome on a conference table. Miss Grant pleaded, no, 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 and please stop. McMahon responded with, no means yes. Miss Grant again told them to stop. Instead, McMahon licked his fingers and penetrated Miss Grant and said, take it, bitch. With each taking turns restraining her for the other. Laura Knight is then joined by forcibly showing his tongue, then pe- uh, shoving him, sorry, uh, his tongue, then penis into Miss Grant's mouth. Another... Johnny Ace rape accusation. During a June 15, 2021 encounter with McMahon and Laurinaitis in the latter's office, Laurinaitis shoved his tongue in Miss Grant's mouth after she pleaded to stop the whole encounter, then unzipped his pants and shoved his penis into plaintiff's mouth. McMahon rape allegation. On June 23, 2021, around 11.42 a.m., Mr. McMahon directed Ms. Grant in the middle of a workday to meet him on a lower floor. When Ms. Grant arrived, McMahon led her inside his private locker room, locked the door, and forced himself on her over a massage table. Later that day, $15,000 in gift cards into Bloomingdale's were purchased at McMahon's direction and delivered by McMahon's personal assistant to Ms. Grant in her office. And after this... Johnny's wife on multiple other occasions while Ms. Grant worked under Laurinaitis, including after McMahon's promise that one-on-one encounters would end because uh, text messages say that John's a sloppy drunk and who knows what he's going to reveal to somebody, despite the fact that Vince is sharing photos and videos with, in his own words, thousands of people. Um, uh, Even after uh, John's wife moved across the country to join Laurinaitis, he would call Ms. Grant to his office, lock the door, unzip his pants and instruct Ms. Grant to perform oral sex. 